Surprised by this unusual formulation, Gary realized that the opponent was expressing his disgust and did not want to have anything to do with the guy. Fortunately, after this incident, they never had the opportunity to see each other again. Some years later, Gary sits in a cafe and talks to two older people. The seemingly friendly atmosphere and conversation does not bring him any pleasure. It only makes the bad feeling that has been with him since the morning worse. The boy has been feeling anxious since his father called to tell him that his good friend Judy wanted to talk to him about something. The boy remembers that the last time he saw this woman was a little over a year ago. Looking at Judy's friendly face, he can't help but feel a little anxious. The conversation seems relaxed, and the woman tells him about her intentions to work in a travel agency and her dreams of one day opening her own business in a similar field. But the man waits patiently for the woman to get to the point of their meeting. Finally, she mentions her adult son, Alex, and shares her concern that the young man currently has no place to live. According to her, the boyfriend is too irresponsible, so she does not dare to give him his own separate apartment. But when she noticed this, Gary's father gave her an idea by mentioning that his son lives alone. Upon hearing this and remembering the reliability and responsible character of our hero, she asks him to take in her wayward son for a while. Realizing that for some reason the boy has no choice but to agree, Gary assures the woman that such a request will not cause him any trouble. He mentally doubts that Alex himself would agree to such a neighborhood. He asks Judy aloud what her son thinks about the idea, remembering that they haven't seen each other in 10 years. With a sigh, the woman admits that in her opinion, her son was not enthusiastic about the idea because he was not ready to share his home with a new person. Remembering Alex's temper, the young man guesses that such news would not only have irritated the boy, but also made him really angry. Judy notes that she was able to reassure her son that this was the only acceptable option for now. She plans to discuss this more thoroughly with both boys during this meeting. So she gave Alex the address of the facility and waited for him to arrive on time. But now he was already an hour late. Gary is quite prepared for the fact that the wayward young man will not show up for the meeting. He realizes that the boy's hatred has hardly diminished since the last time he saw him. Mentally, he admits to himself that what he wants most is to express their mutual unwillingness to live in the same neighborhood. In an effort to collect his thoughts, Gary finds an excuse to go to the bathroom. Left alone, the guy throws himself into his indignation. Because before he was sure that he would no longer have to deal with the conflicted bastard he had shared his life with before. Nevertheless, Gary is about to return to the table when he notices a threatening presence. He looks into the mirror and sees a strong young man standing next to him. He notices the stranger's unfriendly gaze and menacing appearance, which suggests danger and brings back old memories. As he passes by, Gary suddenly realizes that he recognizes the intimidating figure as his former nemesis, Alex. The boy's childhood was spent under the careful supervision of his father, but during their life together, the man married and divorced many times, so the boy had no mother to bond with. His father is now living with his fifth wife. The conflicted boyfriend Gary used to live with, but broke up with in a terrible fight, is the son of his father's third wife. As soon as they met, Gary, who tried to be friendly, had a feeling about his new brother. Immediately noticing the difficult nature of the new friend, the boy was prepared that it would be difficult to make friends with such a person. Gary remembers how Alex always liked to be the center of attention, while our hero would rather spend time alone reading. He was incredibly annoyed by his brother's habit of always wanting to be the center of attention, talking nonsense with a confident look on his face, pretending to be an expert even on subjects he had no idea about. Alex, in turn, looked down on the boy who spent all his free time studying. But this feeling was only reinforced by Gary's way of keeping his real thoughts to himself without showing any sincere emotions. Throughout the time the boys lived together, their relationship remained strained. But unlike their parents, who continued to communicate as friends after the divorce, the boys wanted nothing to do with each other. The last time they saw each other was the day Mrs. Judy left their home with her son. Instead of saying goodbye or feeling sorry for his brother, who had a cold, Alex decided to show off his knowledge by telling him about the incredible size of the insect he had found. But for the first time in their life together, Gary did not hide his irritation and expressed his opinion about Alex's constant lies and exaggerations, reminding him every time that he was wrong and just wanted to draw attention to himself. This statement provoked the always irritable Alex to go completely crazy with rage. He shouted in anger that the always quiet and reserved Gary had finally shown his arrogant nature and accused him of hypocrisy. It was then that the words about not wanting to breathe the same air were spoken. Among all the insults and humiliations he heard at that time, these are the ones that still resonate in Gary's mind. These memories made the young man finally realize that he was facing his old enemy. Anticipating the unpleasant conversation that was about to take place, Gary returned to the table. Mrs. Judy says that her son has just arrived and was on his way to the bathroom the other day. She asks the boy if they bumped into each other there. He admits that he did see Alex, 
but realized who the familiar face belonged to when he was on his way back to the gym. Soon their conversation is interrupted by Alex himself, who silently joins them at the table but does not hide his irritation. Wanting to be polite, Gary is the first to greet his old friend, but the latter does not want to play along and ignores his cordiality. But the piercing look of his mother's eyes forces him to continue the conversation. For a while, everyone has a seemingly casual conversation, exchanging the usual polite phrases about life and affairs. While Gary tries to make small talk, Alex looks at him with disdain. He's once again annoyed by the boy's constant way of hiding his true thoughts and desires behind a smile, and once again mentally accuses the young man of duplicity. As Gary clarifies his thoughts about their life together, Alex tries to express his disagreement until his mother interrupts him. Over her objections, he tries to insist that he wants to live alone, but the woman does not give in, reminding him that the last time he lived alone, the boy completely neglected himself, forgetting even to eat. Gary's father supports Judy, noting that his son is a good cook. Although Gary himself wants Alex to win this argument so that they don't have to live together, he realizes that, despite his character, he is unlikely to stand up to his mother, so he prepares for the worst. To show his indifference to the opinions of his elders, Alex takes out a cigarette and is about to light it in the room. Because of this behavior, the tension between the two people immediately increases. But in order to avoid conflict and end the argument as soon as possible, Gary finally decides to talk to Alex. He directly invites Alex to move in with him. When Gary returns home at the end of this conversation, he's exhausted and wants to go to bed. He also feels quite sick because of his nerves. But his desire to rest is not to be, and the sound of the doorbell disturbs him. Gary's friend Tim turns out to be the guest for the night and offers a drink and a chat. Our hero scolds his friend for his late visit. But the noise he makes reminds him that he has a key to Gary's apartment and can just walk in if he needs to. During the conversation, Tim complains about having broken up with his partner again, which Gary has already guessed from his facial expression. The boy treats his indignant friend to fruit, and they jokingly recall that each of them has always had problems building relationships, whether friendly or romantic. Drinking, Tim is outraged that he has encountered cheating in almost every relationship he has been in. Gary listens sympathetically and suggests that people probably just see the young man as frivolous and unreliable. Hearing his friend's suggestion, Tim emphasizes that he will love a man who gives his heart to him sincerely for the rest of his life. Gary expresses his doubts, noting that it is unlikely that mutual feelings will be achieved so easily. Tim laughs and points out how strange it is to get relationship advice from someone who has never had one. The two friends chat for a while until the subject turns to Gary's personal preferences. Such open conversations make Gary uncomfortable and he is visibly nervous. Seeing his friend's tension and knowing that Gary has frequent health problems, Tim asks how he is feeling. The young man admits that something else has been making him anxious lately. Gary tells Tim that he will soon have to say goodbye to his lonely life because a new neighbor is moving in. But this new neighbor will be the one who does not want to breathe the same air. He remembers the moment when he invited Alex to live with him. Gary said that his house had three separate rooms so that both boys would have their own space and could live together without disturbing each other. But feeling the pressure from everyone around him, Alex realized he had no choice. Returning to the conversation with his friend, Gary admits that he was forced to make this decision by circumstances as his father pays half the rent for his apartment, so he simply could not afford to let the roommate in. To distract himself from his indignation, he changes the subject and advises his friend to find a new partner as soon as possible so that he can be less concerned about the breakup of his previous relationship. But the friend jokingly expresses his sadness because even if he could find a new lover, he would no longer be able to spend time with him at his friend's house. Horrified at the thought, Gary explains that from now on, such thoughts will not even cross his friend's mind. He has always been loyal to Tim's affairs, even when he had them at the boy's house. But he's afraid to imagine how someone as strict as Alex might react to his friend's relationships with men. He hastily pushes away his creepy predictions and asks Tim to give him back the duplicate key to the apartment. But Tim refuses, advising his friend to simply make his own copy for his new neighbor. The next morning, Gary is concerned that the neighbor will occupy the room closest to his. He hopes this will be enough to keep the boys from getting on each other's nerves. Soon the doorbell distracts him from his work. He opens the door to see Mrs. Judy's friendly face and her son's scowl. Inviting them in, Gary shows them around his house, and the woman is pleased to see how clean and tidy the boy is. The woman asks Gary to look after her wayward son in a friendly way and instructs Alex not to make any trouble for him. But Judy is in a hurry to catch a train and will soon be leaving the boys. Puzzled by her impending departure but not ready to be alone with Alex, Gary invites her to stay for a while and taste his home-cooked meal. Unable to resist the offer, she compliments him on his culinary skills. But in the meantime, she barely persuades her gloomy son to try the dish. But despite the delicious taste, he eats in silence, not even thanking her for the meal, until his mother abruptly leaves the boys when she realizes she is late. Trying to avoid the company of a conflicted friend once again,
Gary tries to walk her out, but the woman refuses because she has a car waiting for her. After saying goodbye to Judy, the two boys are soon left alone. When Gary returns to the house, he shows his new neighbor around and suggests that they set some rules for living together to avoid possible conflicts. The man points out that silence is very important to him and asks his neighbor to try to avoid unnecessary noise. He also emphasizes keeping the house clean, and since Gary will be cooking, Alex will be responsible for shopping. The young man also asks if his new roommate would like to add anything from himself to the list, and he nods. With a sinister smile, Alex says that Gary should stay out of his way. Withstanding the stare, Gary adds that the last condition will be that he does not smoke in the house because of his health problems. He adds with a smile that if the guy doesn't want to breathe the same air as Gary, he should take care of the air himself. Hearing this, Alex gives the young man a scornful look and accuses him of hypocrisy. In response, he rebukes his roommate for his arrogance, noting that he has hardly learned anything since they were children. But when he sees his opponent's fists clenched menacingly, he realizes that his new partner may well be prone to violence. Until the conflict is interrupted by the sound of the telephone, and Alex is immediately distracted to answer it. Judging by his tone, he is talking to a girl, but listening to the conversation, Gary is almost shocked to notice the sudden change in his neighbor's mood to a gentle and sweet conversation. Alex, having forgotten about the fight, goes out to dinner with a friend, and Gary notices that the boy doesn't seem to have any problems with money. Soon, he leaves. Finally alone, Gary wants to relieve the tension, but he rejects the idea, imagining how his neighbor might accidentally catch him in such an open situation. But the young man is quite nervous, because the man does indeed return almost immediately but only to remind the neighbor that he still does not have his own key to the house. With a wicked smile, he notices his neighbor's nervous state and taunts him, asking if he's hiding anything shameful. But Gary is convinced that his quiet, lonely life is really over. The boy recalls how he found out that he was different from his peers, not only because of his aloof behavior, but also because of his different tastes. As a teenager exploring his body, he realized that he could only enjoy pleasure in a more feminine way. Gary thinks this is a perverse thing to do, but only his girlfriend knows about this difference. It is through his conversation with Tim that he realizes that, unlike his friend, he is not gay, despite his unusual tastes. It didn't take long for the young man to realize that living with Alex was going to be a real challenge. As Gary watches the workman replace the broken door in his house, he remembers the events of the day before. The first trouble the conflicted neighbor caused was the same night he moved into his new home. It was quite late, but the guy never came home, apparently staying out late for a date. So Gary went to bed, hoping for a good night's sleep, until he was startled awake by a terrible noise coming from the next room. Despite his landlord's warning, Alex, who had just returned in the middle of the night, turned the music up to full blast. Unable to stand the insolence, Gary decides to remind his neighbor of their agreement. Opening the door to the next room, he can barely contain his indignation as he sees his neighbor's smug face surrounded by clouds of cigarette smoke. Gary angrily reminds Alex of the rules about noise and smoking in the house as he taunts him about his personal space. But he smugly explains that he never agreed to such rules, and it was Gary himself who somehow decided that he would follow the conditions. In an attempt to reason with his stubborn neighbor, Gary reminds him that they both wanted to live without seeing each other. Pretending the neighbor did not exist, Alex, with a smug smile, points out that if he can't imagine living under Gary's conditions and denying his own desires, he can't imagine not having a roommate. Hearing this, the young man is convinced that it will be impossible to come to a compromise with such a stubborn and dismissive person. But unable to tolerate this attitude any longer, the boy insists firmly that Alex leave his house. Feeling superior, the conflicted neighbor in turn reminds him that it was Gary who invited him to live with him. And if he can find Alex a new place, he will gladly get rid of his presence. Tired, Gary realizes that his neighbor is right. But just to end the conflict, he asks him to at least turn down the volume, warning him that he might call the police. But after turning off the music, Alex points out that there has to be a reason to call the police, and Gary can't do it every time he hears a loud noise. Besides, the music can be turned off at any time, so threatening the police is pointless. Outraged and irritated, Gary has no choice but to return to his room. The next day, the situation escalates even more as Alex's cozy home quickly turns into a real dump in his presence. But what really pissed him off was when a cheeky neighbor brought Jenny, his girlfriend, into the house without asking the homeowner's opinion. In an attempt to restore order in the house, Gary demands that the stranger leave, but Alex has no intention of giving in, seeing no authority in his roommate. Leaving the boy with nothing, he returns to his room where his girlfriend is waiting for him. Another conflict between the boys occurred when Alex came home late and was surprised to find that he could not open the front door. Thinking that his neighbor was deliberately keeping him out of his house, he broke in and forced his way inside. At this time, Gary was sleeping peacefully, blocking out the outside noise with the new birch bark. Unaware of the destruction outside his room, he only woke up when Alex threw him out of bed, 
But when his neighbor asked him shocked questions, he told him about the broken door and demanded to know if he had any more questions about the keys. Gary tells this story, as well as all the previous ones, to Tim while spending time in his bar and complaining about the difficult life with his new neighbor. The friend sympathizes with the guy, and they discuss the possibility of finding a new place for the annoying roommate. Until Tim is distracted by a strange woman who enters the bar. The young man apologizes to the visitor and says that the place will open in an hour. The woman tells him that she arranged to meet him here without knowing the opening time, and that her partner could show up at any moment. Tim allows her to wait in the bar for her date, but then asks her to leave before the bar opens. While talking to Gary, he shares that in recent years, his clients have often been couples in which the older woman provides for the younger partner, suggesting that this lady may not be an exception. But Gary is not interested in his friend's words because his thoughts are now occupied by the annoying behavior of his neighbor. That is, until a new person enters the bar and the shocked young man recognizes Alex. Obviously, he turns out to be the companion the wealthy friend has been waiting for, and as Gary watches them meet, he does his best not to be seen by the enemy. The young man sees how affectionately he communicates with the woman in an atypical way, showing attentiveness and kindness. As he continues his conversation with his older friend, he looks around, examining his surroundings. But fortunately, Gary manages to hide from his gaze. But when Tim realizes the situation, he helps his friend by shielding him from the guests. Nevertheless, the young man stares at Alex, noting his handsome physique and masculine face. But Gary is quick to remind him that, unlike Tim, his neighbor is only interested in women, not to mention the disgusting nature of his conflicted roommate. Meanwhile, Gary remembers that Alex was going to spend time with his girlfriend Jenny that evening, and this is the first time he has seen his neighbor with this woman. As if to confirm Gary's doubts, he overhears Alex talking to the woman and apologizing saying that he had just been contacted by a close friend who desperately needed his support. So unfortunately, he now has to leave his girlfriend to meet and comfort his beloved. When she hears this, she has no hesitation in letting him go, saying that he is such a kind and compassionate person that he would never leave a friend in trouble. But she doesn't leave her companion empty-handed and sincerely gives him a large sum of money as a parting gift. The friends who witnessed this scene seem to have the same idea, but Tim is determined to find out for himself. After waiting for Alex to leave, he leaves his friend for a while and exchanges a few words with the visitor. Soon after, when he returns to their table, Tim confirms that the young man is indeed in a sponsored relationship with the woman, emphasizing that it is now up to Gary to decide how to use this information. That evening, at home, Gary reflects on his roommate's activities and recalls recent events, until his thoughts are interrupted by Alex himself, who has just returned home. But, not wanting to prolong the conversation, Gary gets straight to the point and asks how his neighbor's meeting with his outraged friend went, making it clear what he had witnessed the day before. He also notes that Alex has made a good living, earning money by meeting older women. But he finally upsets him by mentioning his current relationship with Jenny. When he hears this, he goes completely crazy with rage, lunges at the boy, grabs him by the collar and screams, accusing him of being a sneaky stalker. Gary, however, manages to emphasize that he witnessed the incident by chance, but still the formidable neighbor threatens to kill him if he dares to spread rumors about his private life. But feeling that he has finally found his opponent's weakness, the young man does not want to give up and hints at the trouble that might await Alex if anyone in his circle were to learn of his affairs. The threats make the angry boy even angrier, but Gary finally fights back, feeling that he is in real danger. He points out to a somewhat confused Alex that even though he doesn't have the contact information for the boy's girlfriends, he can still contact his mother. Smiling wickedly, he replies that he will not allow it and again threatens his neighbor. But when she sees Gary's phone in his hands, she reacts immediately and tries to take it away by force. Gary rationalizes that even destroying the phone won't change the situation because nothing will prevent him from using another number in the future. Realizing the hopelessness of his situation, Alex finally backs down and agrees to accept his neighbor's terms. We see Alex's memories of him and his friends bullying a stranger. His friends remark that he has always been particularly attracted to young men like him who are thin and clean. In his own words, he has a personal dislike for such people because they remind him of someone for whom he has a rare hatred. Wanting to get rid of the annoying thoughts, Alex changes the subject, and one of his friends tells him about an easy way to make money. And so he heard for the first time about moonlighting as a companion for wealthy women. The next morning after the last conversation, Gary does the housework and wonders if Alex has done a good job. Seeing Alex fixing something in the bathroom, he thanks him with a friendly smile and reminds him to keep his room tidy. Alex looks at his roommate with hatred, aware of the fact that he has been forced into such a degrading activity. He mentally reminds himself that he must keep his temper and honor the agreement. However, he still recognizes that he likes the food that Gary prepares. However, it is unlikely that they will ever get along. 
because at the slightest mention of his recent encounter with a girl, the guy loses his head and angrily throws the hammer away. No longer afraid of his neighbor's tantrums, Gary calmly invites him to the table for lunch. But even at lunch, the boys do not get along. Gary's next request is to wash the covers on the couch, but when he sees that it is not done, he blames his neighbor. The neighbor dismisses him, arguing that a simple splash of water would have been enough. The boy is meticulous about household chores and insists on his own methods of keeping the house in order. Later, Gary explains to his neighbor that the cover should be washed in the bathtub with his feet. Realizing that he is in such a stupid position because of a chance encounter in a bar, Alex once again cannot contain his anger and hits the tiled wall with all his might, scattering tile fragments. Getting used to his roommate's short temper and realizing that he is now responsible for the mess, Gary calmly picks up the sharp pieces, not wanting him to cut himself. She even helps Alex roll up his pants, reminding him that he can easily ruin them with dirty water when he washes them. But when Gary noticed his neighbor's diligence, he thanked him sincerely and praised him for a job well done. Alex seems pleasantly surprised by the young man's friendly attitude. The understanding lasted only a moment, however, and Alex, irritated by the presence of his neighbor, abandons the cleaning and goes about his business. Gary tries to keep the young man from leaving by pointing out his unfinished list of chores, which only adds to his bad mood. With an evil smile, he piles more and more responsibilities on his neighbor as if deliberately trying to keep him off balance. But Alex's patience finally runs out, and he emphasizes that he will no longer live next door to Gary. He does not object, but his opponent points out that the countless chores he had to do today should have been enough as part of his bargain. Gary accepts the deal but realizes that his only regret is that he cooked dinner for two out of habit. Alex has already packed his things and turns the key, ready to leave their home for good. But he is momentarily distracted by the delicious meal his neighbor has just finished. Gary mentally admits that up to this point, he has really been trying his best to outlive his annoying roommate. But it would be a shame to eat such a sumptuous meal alone. He's about to call Tim and invite him to dinner when Alex, who is there in an instant, suddenly snatches the phone out of his hand. But to his surprise, the reason for this abrupt behavior is simply the desire to have a good home-cooked meal after a hard day. Hearing this, Gary bursts out laughing to Alex's shock. After dinner, Alex agrees to do the dishes without argument, and it seems that the two boys have finally managed to settle their differences, and the issue of moving gradually fades away. As Gary watches the big boy, he thinks for the first time that his neighbor might actually be kind of cute. In their struggle, Alex considers this sudden change of attitude as a real victory. Even if the obstinate young man's compliance was obtained through blackmail in relation to a shameful part-time job, Gary has repeatedly noticed that when he talks to Mrs. Judy, who is always interested in her son's life, Alex listens attentively and cannot hide his excitement. Finally, he feels like the head of his own house again, having tamed his roommate's wild temper. He proudly looks forward to their future life in peace and tranquility. Now they share the household chores equally, and there are no more conflicts about them. Until one evening, Alex warns his neighbor that he may soon invite his friends over. A few days later, Gary wakes up in the middle of the day, completely exhausted. A colleague had called him the day before to ask for his help with a problem with the program, so he agreed and stayed up all night working on it. After only falling asleep in the morning and sleeping for several hours, Gary now feels extremely tired. In the kitchen, he meets Alex, who, judging by his half-naked appearance, has just returned from a run. Gary chides his neighbor for being untidy, using the shared water pitcher instead of his own cup. Without his usual anger, Alex brushes aside his roommate's nitpicking, but still corrects his mistake. Half-heartedly observing his neighbor, Gary mentally notes that the boy's appearance can indeed easily attract the attention of both sexes. Alex notices his neighbor's look and asks him what he noticed, seemingly asking for a compliment. But he remains a little disappointed when Gary again points out the order of things in the kitchen. Later, however, he notices his roommate's good shape. Soon Gary goes back to sleep, wanting to rest after a hard night. But Alex points out that he won't be home that night, so he doesn't have to cook for them. But soon, a tired Gary is finally alone. The exhausted boy promises himself never to work overtime again. Now he just wants to take advantage of his loneliness and relieve some of the tension. But Gary's relaxation is interrupted by sudden intrusive thoughts about his neighbor. The boy tries to get rid of the intrusive images, embarrassed by his own imagination. A few days later, Gary is tormented at night, unable to sleep because of the noise in the house. He remembers how Alex had warned him the night before about some friends coming over, but he could not imagine that it would be such an annoying event. That evening, when he came out of the bathroom, he got his first glimpse of the kind of company his neighbor had brought to her house. Alex introduced his neighbor to his friends, and to Gary's incredible indignation, they were sitting in the living room in a crowd. Meanwhile, the boys were already discussing Gary himself, brazenly commenting on his cuteness. From his room, the young man heard them irritably calling for him to come over and talk to them. 
Alex, in turn, tried to dissuade his friends from the offer, pointing out that his neighbor was a bore and a whiner. When Gary heard these words, he was very offended and angry at his neighbor's behavior. Normally, he would try to avoid such people, but because of Alex, he now has to endure their company in his home. But his thoughts are interrupted when his roommate enters the room. Gary mentally notes that just by looking at his roommate's company, he realized what kind of scum he was befriending. The boy doubts that Alex himself realizes what a dangerous bunch he has gathered around him. But Gary himself will not bow to the whims of the heathens and keep them company. He wonders aloud if Alex has deliberately brought such a gang to harass him. He replies that he hopes his neighbor will heed his warning about his friends and perhaps find an excuse to leave the house for a night. However, a nervous Gary, looking into the face of his interlocutor, suddenly remembers his recent obsessive fantasies and is unexpectedly embarrassed. But when Alex notices the sudden change in his neighbor's condition, he becomes concerned and approaches the young man to ask if he's all right. Gary is completely confused by this rapid reduction in distance. But before he realizes what he's doing, he shoves his roommate roughly, knocking him down. For a while, the boys look at each other, trying to comprehend what has just happened. But quickly regaining his senses, Alex lunges at his neighbor, grabs him by the collar, and demands an explanation for his behavior. He notes that he has noticed that Gary is actually afraid of his company, but only pretends to be indifferent. However, he relents and lets the boy go, assuring him that his friends are not really bad people. Although they are frightened, they will not hurt Gary. Hearing the implication that he is a coward, he feels that he may lose his authority in his home again. To defend himself, Gary grabs his neighbor by the collar and yells that he will not be intimidated by Alex or his company. In anger, he reminds him of his mother, who will not be happy to learn of her son's dangerous environment. And he even points out that he is older than his opponent, so he demands respect. After listening to the nervous young man's cries, Alex looks into his neighbor's face, which this time is full of sincere emotion. She finds Gary's open behavior unexpectedly charming. For a while, the two boys look at each other in silence. In his mind, the shocked Alex realizes that whereas before the sight of his neighbor had only made him want to punch him in the face, now he seems unexpectedly sweet. Under the influence of either the moment or the alcohol he had consumed earlier, the young man leans closer to Gary's worried face. However, afraid of doing too much, Alex quickly recovers and comes to his senses with a quick punch. Unable to comprehend what has just happened, Gary looks at his neighbor in amazement wondering if he has lost his mind. But they are distracted from the brewing argument by one of Alex's friends who has come to invite him back to the company. He also invites Gary to join them, but in this invitation he finds an excuse to prove his resolve. After telling Alex that he won't be afraid of his friends, he walks steadily towards the living room. To everyone's surprise, he actually joins the group of boys at the table. Soon he is having a friendly drink with Alex's friends until a young man sitting next to him speaks to him. He asks if Gary is a friend of Tim's, and as he looks at the stranger's face, he realizes that they may have met before. The young man's name is Mike, and Gary has seen him once in a bar with a friend. However, they have never had a chance to meet in person. Mike insists that their meeting must have been fate, given their mutual acquaintance. Gary feels uncomfortable because, given his life with Alex and his friendship with Tim, Mike will probably assume that our hero is also interested in men. But when Alex sees Gary's expression, he is quick to point out that he and the boy are only roommates. But Mike's look makes the boys even more nervous suggesting that he has already made up his mind about them. Unable to withstand the pressure, Gary decides on a radical distraction and swallows a glass of alcohol. But when he realizes how strong the drink was, he starts to regret his actions. But he's pleasantly surprised to hear the company cheering. And feeling an unexpected surge of strength, he addresses Mike informally as brother. The young man, however, is not surprised and even approves of this directness, adding that Alex has found a good friend. Still embarrassed by his own words, he accepts his new friend's praise and continues to speak. Soon after the guests leave, the boys clean up the house until Gary feels sick from drinking alcohol. Seeing his roommate's condition, Alex is concerned, but when he hears that his neighbor is about to throw up, he offers to help. But to Gary's shock, he easily lifts him onto his shoulders and carries him to the bathroom. Alex chides his neighbor for drinking too much alcohol. Gary points out that if he had left him alone and not broken into his room, none of this would have happened. But their conversation is cut short because Gary is in a very bad state. Alex, who once again looked too closely at his neighbor, puts him in his place by slapping him. He comforts his roommate by putting his hand on his back, and as he feels the warmth of his touch, Gary realizes the sense of security and safety that comes from his roommate. Finally feeling a little better, he is surprised to see another punch mark on his face that Alex has left. For a moment, Gary stares at his roommate, lost in thought. He is surprised to find that now, perhaps due to the effects of alcohol or the unusual lighting, the young man finds Alex extremely attractive. His thoughts are interrupted by Alex himself, who notices his friend's weakness and is convinced that he has a fever. Distancing himself from his neighbor, Gary refers to his weak nerves, which often make him sick, and he goes to sleep. 
After Alex has finished cleaning, he visits his roommate's room and asks how he is feeling. When he sees the young man's exhausted face, he's finally convinced of his friend's plight. But Gary waves away Alex's investigation and asks him to leave him alone. As he walks away, he grumbles about his neighbor's unfriendly attitude towards his excitement. Realizing this, Gary is surprised to feel cared for for the first time. Soon, Alex returns with a glass of water for his sick friend. The young man also looks in the medicine cabinet for something to reduce the fever, but Gary assures him that he does not need any special treatment as this happens to him quite often. But rest and good sleep should be enough to relieve him from his unpleasant condition. Nevertheless, Alex insists on taking fever-reducing medicine, expressing his genuine concern for his neighbor. Soon he leaves Gary alone, but he can't hide his surprise at his neighbor's concern. The next morning, Gary feels much better and calls Tim and tells him all about the events of the previous night. The friend laughs heartily when he hears about his friend's adventures and the introduction of their mutual friend. He also promises that when he sees Mike again, he will ask him about the previous night and about his impressions of Gary. After finishing the conversation, the young man goes back to his thoughts, which are now preoccupied with Alex, whom he has seen in a new light. Gary admits that his neighbor is really quite attractive and has many friends, so he might be a good person. Last but not least, he is pleased with his roommate's sincere passion for home cooking and sometimes really touching behavior. However, when he feels a strange line of thought, Gary is quick to push it away.